Live from Penn State, this is Nittany Talk. I'm your host, Jake Santora, and today we'll be discussing the latest political news, breaking down our favorite music of this year, learning more about the Watergate scandal, and figuring out what exactly is in that box. Now, let's get to talking. Welcome back to Nittany Talk. To kick things off, we're going to send it over to the politics panel to discuss the newly elected president of Argentina, Javier Milei, and the allegations against New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Over to you, Yaya. Thanks, Jake. Today I'm joined by Jace Obardo, Francie Ebert, Olivia Jean, and Ryan Lowey. The mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, has recently been accused of sexually assaulting a woman in 1993. The alleged victim stated the incident happened while they were both working as city employees. Adams has been unpopular with New Yorkers for quite some time, and this incident may make things worse. On the international stage, Argentina has elected Javier Millet as their new president. A white-wing libertarian, the president-elect has been likened to Trump in his policy positions and personality. Starting with you, Jakes, what are your thoughts on Eric Adams' situation and his, just his term in general? Yeah. Well, anytime something comes out about someone being sexually assaulted, it's terrible because it's just not a good thing and we've seen a lot of it and a lot of it's coming out now um and of course mayor adams denies it like a lot of people do but um as far as his term is concerned i think he's really struggling um it's especially with the migrant crisis that's happening in new york uh since um since between since mid-october between then and spring of 2022 nearly 14,000 migrants arrived in new york city and he's called upon the federal government government for help. And him and uh, President Biden haven't spoken in a year, I think, I saw. So he definitely doesn't have a good relationship with the White House right now. And he needs the help. And he's expecting that he's expecting it to cost $12 billion over the next three years to help these people. So I think there's a real problem that he's facing. And New York isn't happy about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go back to the beginning conversation. I think any time that we're going to talk about sexual assault, I think it gets, it's it's upsetting because we go back to, like, the transparency going on. Like, he denies that he never even met the woman, which I find is kind of interesting um, because you think there would be proof whether he did meet the woman or not. Um, but the New York Times stated, uh, Mr. Adams quickly faced criticism on many fronts including painful budget cuts at some schools and a seeming lack of urgency in addressing New York's affordability crisis. This goes, kind of goes back to what you're talking about. So he's dealing with a lot of external factors, and I think with his, this challenge of the sexual assault thing, sexual assault thing is another thing on top. Um, I don't know. It, 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 it's difficult to wrap your head around. I don't know. He's got, he's got a lot going on, but has he done a good job? Quite honestly, no. I don't think he has. I mean, 30, 37% uh, have approved of his term. Um, so that leaves a lot of percent that disapprove of his term and the work that he's been doing, as well as 72% uh, think that wrongdoing was done with, with his visits to Turkey, which are people are questioning those visits, questioning the uh, relevance of why he kept going there on so many visits. Um, so I'm really interested to see if he will give us more information because he's not giving us any details on his visits to Turkey, and I find that very questionable. Um, in addition, I actually saw something about uh, Andrew Cuomo um, possibly taking his spot in 2025 or running for it, um, which is interesting because <laughs> the two of them are kind of in the same boat. They have had the same allegations. And so I'm just wondering, why does the former governor of New York think that he's going to win a, an election as mayor against somebody who has the same allegations as him? 
My question is, what is going on in New York? <laughs> New York, I mean, we got the Cuomos, Giuliani, Santos, now Adams. What is with New York and these allegations? These politicians need to sit down and realize, you know, they're spending a lot of time on national television. They're public employees. They're elected officials. Can they behave themselves? I mean, what is going on in New York? It's just been, it's been nuts. But in regards to Eric Adams, he wasn't dealt the best deal. I mean, de Blasio was not a very popular mayor. De Blasio was also a Democrat. People were even questioning if Adams is a Democrat. I mean, very tough on crime. He was in the police department. But, you know, he also resembles the nightlife of New York. What people love about Eric Adams is that he really knows what it's like to be a New Yorker, and he loves New York, a special place in his heart in comparison to other mayors. And that's what I like about Eric Adams. But has he done a bad job? I guess you can argue, but you can also say that he was dealt a bad card because crime rates were going up severely during the de Blasio transition into Adams, which is one thing that we have to take note of. And then another thing, too, with Eric Adams that actually defends those who don't like him is, you know, the question of is he a really a Democrat because he registered as a Republican a long time ago, since the 90s and the early 2000s. He was registered as a Republican. Not only that... Um, he was very selfish in terms of payments to senators in the state of New York. New York is one of the highest paid state senates. When he was in the senates, he was complaining a lot about the budget towards Senate pay. So, you know, he's, he seems to really not make up his mind on if he's a Republican or a Democrat and if he really does like the current structure of government or not. He really just, he likes to protest in a position where he shouldn't be, and he likes to make a lot of interesting statements. He's a nightlife kind of guy. I think the best way to sum up everything I just said is that he can't sit still. He's ADHD in a, de in a mayor's position. That's really what he is. He can't sit still. He's everywhere. Well, just to touch on something Olivia said, and I'm going to come back to a point you made, Ryan. Um, one thing about his visit to Turkey is actually he's now at the center of an FBI investigation because they're questioning how far his relationship goes, whether there's some monetary exchange going on, the same kind of thing that we saw with Clarence Thomas. So I'm interested to see where that goes and mm -hmm. how that's going to further impact his already crumbling reputation. Additionally, one thing, you mentioned him being tough on crime. A lot of New Yorkers, especially black New Yorkers, have criticized him for developing what people call cop city, in which communities are being over-policed. Mm -hmm. And we know how people are starting to feel more and more mm -hmm. negatively about the police and how we're kind of moving towards a more rehabilitative version in, uh, or system, or people want to move more towards that instead of more punitive. So I think that's a very interesting conversation to be had. And I want to bounce off of that really quickly. The thing about law enforcement right now, it's a very touchy subject because the NYPD is seeing very low numbers of recruitment. And so to have a former guy in blue who actually was assaulted by law enforcement officers back in the day and that motivated him to become a cop could be a good thing for the NYPD. But obviously, as we do know, the NYPD has always been at the epicenter of issues. And he yeah. said, I stand behind my law enforcement officers, but he's also a very big advocate of getting rid of guns. Again, he's all over the place. Yeah. So, so he really does have to make a point to where he wants to be in certain matters. Let's talk about President-elect Millet. I mean, cloned his dog. Mm -hmm. let's, <laughs> let's talk about it. I this just don't so have anything else to say. I mean, Jace, what, what's, what's I, going on? I don't really have much <laughs> to say about it. Because it's just like so out of left field. He's, um, he's the, first, the world's first libertarian leader. Mm -hmm. And if we're looking at South America, a lot of those countries are socialists. I mean, we look at Venezuela. Um, and Argentina is heading to 200% inflation this year. And so he wants to do a lot economically mm -hmm. to try and uh, fix that. He, he's talking about adopting the U.S. dollar, I know. I was which just would be interesting no to see. Um, and then we would see effects of that here in the U.S. But I don't, I don't want to have much to say about because it it, it's just, it's odd. It's, wait, Donald Trump. it's surprising. It's a yeah. wait and see Donald Trump. situation. Yeah. And, you know, obviously what definitely helped him was he defeated the current economy minister, um, Sergio Massa. That really did help him. Obviously, it was a runoff election, so it was already tight. And, you know, the economy is a disaster. So that really shows that people were not Malay's biggest fan to begin with, but people were not the current presidency's fan to begin with within Alberto Fernandez. Yeah. And he sounds very serious about getting rid of the central bank, mm -hmm. which will be very interesting to see how that all plays out in that country. But also, I want to, I mean, we, people have compared him to Donald Trump. And I think that's a fair comparison. But what is interesting to me is that as over the recent years, we've seen more Donald Trumps, right? We've seen more politicians take a more Donald Trump route where mm -hmm. they're more aggressive with their campaigning. Mm -hmm. They're a little less appropriate in the words that they use when they're talking to uh, their citizens or their people. Um, so 
I mean, we're moving away from like this JFK, this like prestige kind of presidents mm -hmm. that we see around the world. So um, I, I'm just, I'm wondering to see how it all will play out across the entire world. Well, he opposes um, feminist policies, policies and abortion. He has proposed a to repeal laws that have been legalized in recent mm -hmm. years there. Um, in addition, he has rejects the notion humans have a role in causing climate change. So he's he's got this, like, we're seeing a trend in the way that he's feeling about a lot of these um, current political ideologies happening right now. And, you know, I... I kind of, I'll, kind of like what Chase was saying. There's only so much you can say. You know, he's gonna be if he's gonna take this and he's gonna the peso. He wants to remove the peso mm -hmm. and have the American dollar in there. I don't, I, I don't know how that can even yeah. be implemented. And the last thing I'd like to say too is that the the fact that he's bouncing off of an Alberto Fernandez presidency, which has just been an absolute disaster, I think really saved him in the election. Yeah, well, I'm interested to see how he cooperates with other with his mm -hmm. surrounding countries. We see Lula in Brazil, who's pretty socialist, Venezuela, like Jace mentioned. But all in all, I think looking at these politicians on the big screen and hearing their policies is always such a thrilling ride for me personally. That's why we're all on the politics mm -hmm. panel. Right. That's all we have for today. Back to you, Jake. Thanks, Yaya. Yeah. We'll be right back to talk more about this year's best new music. And I've been obsessed with the vault tracks. Like, they are my favorite from all her other re-recordings, better than Red Speak Now, in my opinion. Welcome back to Nittany Talk. From Dolly Parton to Olivia Rodrigo, 2023 was filled with so many new releases from artists. And with the end of the year approaching, most people, including myself, have already decided their favorite album of the year. I'll send it over to Kate to further discuss this year's music. Thanks, Jake. We are officially approaching the end of 2023, and this year is filled with all new releases from our favorite music artists. I'm your host, Kate Howie, joined here by Yaya Wan, Joy Donald, and Danny Vitali, and today we'll be discussing and guessing each other's favorite albums and songs from this year. Joy, would you like to start us off? I'd love to. So, to start off, I'm going to go with Tech by Lil Tecca. Um, he came out with this album a little bit, not too much into 2023, but honestly, I've this has been on repeat the entire mm -hmm. year. So, the song that I'd like to highlight from this album, here's the lyrics. Would you guys like to guess? I got it already. I love, I love Tucka. 500 pounds? <laughs> yeah, you are so right. Okay, so 500 pounds is the song that I chose. Um, it's a little bit of an R&B twist on to what we're already used to with Tekka. I know everyone here probably knows Ransom. That was released back oh, yeah. in 2020. It was on the charts for weeks. Great. And this is a newer, more R&B, a little slower, but still has that original rap feel that we love from Tekka. And this song, and specifically this album, was honestly just such a hit to me, and I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was great. Everybody's like, oh, Tech is going to save the summer. He didn't drop till really, really late, but <laughs> he can save the fall for me. I thought it was an amazing album. And yeah. I like Burger World better. I think that'll always be my favorite album from Tekka, but I love this one too. I've always loved Tekka. I haven't listened to this album because I literally did not even know he was <laughs> dropping, but I listened to Need Me. And like you said, like Great there's one. that R&B twist and he does sampling in a way that you don't get tired of it or you're not like, this is literally just the same song yeah. with different lyrics. Um, I think his production was genius on that song. Yeah, so I will sure. definitely go and give this one a listen to. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, one thing I think that is really, um, one thing that I like to note on this album is even though there is a little bit of an R&B twist on it, there's some, there's still some really like hype and really good yeah, songs sure. that really just have me stay, have me bumping in my room. Yeah. But yeah, let's go with my next song. Absolutely. So this is my top choice. Number two, it's at Loan at Prom Deluxe. Great. So this is by Tory Lanez. Um, the original Alone at Prom, it came out back in 2022, but this specific song that I used, it did come out in 2023 as a single, but then made its way onto the deluxe version that came out just a few weeks ago. And uh, would you guys like to guess the song? Sure. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild <laughs> guess here and go with Hurts Me. Yeah, I mean, it's really just in there, Great but song. honestly, <laughs> it's an amazing song. Yeah. I love this song so much. And um, one of the main things that I really like about this song is it has kind of like a sad, somber mm -hmm. message to it, but it's still a really like upbeat, yeah. up tempo melody. That. And I really love a good contradicting message. Yeah, like something awesome. about it, it just really has me like dancing. Definitely. And I really like, especially about Alone at Prom, 
it has a really cool 70s kind of groovy little vibe to it yeah. it kind of really brings me back to you know prom season back in high school Definitely. and i feel like that's what he was trying to portray and he really got the message across but have you guys listened to this album uh, i haven't oh, yeah. i haven't listened to tori since the whole megan thing happened <laughs> but i've always loved his voice he's my guilty pleasure i'll listen to him when nobody's around i really think he has <laughs> Such an amazing voice, and even rapping, like he's super talented. So I'm on the fence. Maybe I'll go listen, give it a listen when I'm alone in my room. But <laughs> I think Playboy is great. I love that album. I've listened to this one personally, but I love the song. I found it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Tory Lanez is amazing, though. His engineers are ridiculous. I don't know how they get the auto tune to sound so smooth, yet it's so mm -hmm. like obvious. I think it's amazing and i wish i could figure out how that worked yeah but, one yeah. thing about tori he's so versatile he's amazing, um yeah. if you heard some of his other songs that were trending on tiktok there were some rap there was some heavy there was some songs like this that were a little bit more just like on the sadder side yeah. but i love a good versatile artist and tori can definitely give you that all right so for my album i picked guts by olivia rodrigo she releases in september and it's her second album this might seem a little bit basic, but I've been a an Olivia Rodrigo fan since her Disney days. So I like to stay loyal, and she went with a whole new style for this album. It was a lot more edgy and raw compared to her last album. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this album, but this is my favorite song that I picked. If you know the titles, it might give it away the lyrics. I can't say. <laughs> no, I only <laughs> saw the track list on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take a stab at it. I'm going to guess logical. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just there. Backing. You go. <laughs> okay, and then for my next album, I don't know if this really counts because it's a re-recording, but I went with 1989 Kayla's version, of course. But the reason why I picked this is because she released it a month ago, and I've been obsessed with the vault tracks. Like they are my favorite from all her other re-recordings, better than Red Speak Now, in my opinion. I've just had this on repeat, especially this song. So I picked this song. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but if you want to try to guess it. My sister would get this in like one second. Really? I, I have zero clue. Right. I honestly can't say I probably only know Taylor Swift's like top hits. Yeah. yeah um, like literally. from back in 2000, maybe 17. So yeah. I have yeah. no clue. I have, I have nothing for you either. You lost me. <laughs> okay. This one is, is it over now? It's one of her vault tracks. But yeah, this was probably my favorite recording from her so far. Hmm. Love it. All right. We are moving on. My top album was the first time by The Kid Leroy, which just dropped a few weeks ago. Um, I might be a little biased since I've met the guy, I opened for him, but he is one of my favorite artists, probably my favorite artist of all time. So um, I picked this album just because we waited super long for it. Um, fans are waiting for it. His last project was from like April of 2021. So it has been a minute. It was like a 20 piece project. So a lot of people wanted a longer thing. He gave us a 20 piece McNugget. So it was pretty fire. Um, this is my favorite song on the album. Do you guys have any idea? Probably, um, probably not. I don't think so. No. Right. No. I do not listen to him. It's, yeah. it's called Sorry. Um, he really wants it to be authentic. I've realized in a lot of music, especially rap and pop, like now people are going from the more vibey stuff to the more authentic and vulnerable stuff, which I can really appreciate. He's talking here about just being a teen and navigating money and fame and stuff like that. And I think that's such a cool and relatable message, even on a smaller scale for other people. But that is definitely my favorite one. Next one, it was either this album, uh, for my next one, it was either this album or Wild West by Arizona Zervis. Um, he made Roxanne, but he had so much more better music. I wish people would realize that. <laughs> this is Jackman by Jack Harlow. Um, again, he said he didn't post this on social media once to promote it. No TikTok, no nothing. Unlike Loving On Me, which just released, which I think is fire. But he just really wanted to make something that was vulnerable and authentic and similar to the message of the last song I showed. He's just talking about becoming vain and insecure about social media. And we all know Jack Harlow is this big, you know, shooting a shot with Saweetie on camera, being a super confident guy that everybody loves. But here he's very expressive and insecure and stuff. I think that's so important to share as like a huge confident figure. It definitely helps a lot of people out um, mentally to know like, you know, everybody is going through the same stuff, but this is my um, song. Any ideas? Um, no clue. clue, but honestly, just reading the lyrics, it really does seem like I kind of agree with you. He seems really like true to himself. I think part of being a um, part of being famous, I feel like there's probably a lot of things that we don't see 100%. being part of the just general public, but um, I don't know this song, but personally, I feel like I would really want to listen to it because I also really like the authentic stuff. This is called Denver, and I love it. Um, so many great songs, so that's my favorite one. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like off. Jack Harlow, or I used to really like him. I don't listen to him as much anymore. I remember when he came to Penn State for my freshman year moving on, and it was so crazy. So he was definitely one of the best artists I've seen live. But on to me, now I'm going to talk to you guys about real music. <laughs> wow. <laughs> going okay. with wow. SOS by SZA, the best drop of 2023. No okay. ifs, ands, or buts. I love SZA. Solana, that's my girl down. Um, we've been waiting since 2017 for her to drop. 
So if y'all want to take a guess, you've definitely heard this song somewhere. I love this song. It's Nobody Gets Me. Yes, One of my favorite songs. I really love this album, too. It's I don't know if pick. you guys watched um, Queen Charlotte, but they did an instrumental version with like violins Ooh, and pianos uh, and everything. Uh -huh. And I promise you, I went to my bathroom and I sat on the floor and I ugly <laughs> cried. It was so amazing. But yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite songs by SZA ever. For my next one, going a little bit farther from R&B, um, A Gift and a Curse by Gunna. Everybody wanted to boycott Gunna because he snitched in jail. He didn't snitch on me, so that's not my problem. <laughs> um, but this is one of my favorite songs. The name is already up there, so um, Rodeo Drive. But this is such a great song. Everybody knows the other song with an explicit title that I'm not going to repeat on camera. <laughs> but this song, it's very underrated. I think the production is crazy. Gonna switch his entire flow throughout, and I think y'all should definitely go check this out. Well, that's all we have time for today. We are looking forward to another year filled with new music from some of our favorite, favorite artists. Back to you, Jake. Thanks, Kate. Well, those are definitely opinions. We'll be right back. They broke into Watergate um, to try to get information. Hotel. Yes, hotel. 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 Yeah. Hotel. To try Nothing to, get to do with water no. or gates. No, no water. Surprise. <laughs> Welcome back to Nittany Talk. Up next, we'll be discussing the notorious Watergate scandal. Wow, I remember when that news first broke. Just kidding, I wasn't alive. Anyway, over to you, Ryan. Thanks, Jake. I love your tie. Welcome back to Crime Reviews. I'm your host, Ryan Lowey, joined alongside Sam Rascio, Katie Schreiner, and Eva Hines. Tonight, we'll be diving into a pivotal moment in American politics and crime. In June of 1972, the foundations of trust in our American government were forever shaken by the infamous Watergate scandal. Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, two investigative journalists, began an investigation into President Richard Nixon, a Republican and our nation's 37th president. Believing that the re-elect Nixon campaign was responsible for the Watergate hotel break-in during the Democratic National Convention of 1972. It's now time to talk about the key players in this case, the crime itself, its aftermath, and how government today is still affected by one of the biggest scandals in presidential history that led to the first and only resignation of a sitting president. Katie? So I feel like to start this out, we need to talk about the 47th election of 1972. <laughs> so this election was President Richard Nixon. This was going to be his second term against George McGovern. So George McGovern, he ran a campaign that was all about anti-war. He was very much like, Nixon's just going to lead you into war. You had the Vietnam War going on at the time. Mm -hmm. Except for George McGovern, he only got 17 electoral votes. He won over Massachusetts and Washington, D.C., and that was it. Everyone else went for Nixon. It was kind of like Watergate? What's that? Like. Mm -hmm. They really? kind of forgot about it, and Nixon won with a landslide. It was victory. it was definitely a time. Uh, excuse me, it was definitely a time of Republican ideals back yes. in the day. I mean, we saw that with Reagan. You know, the '60s, the '70s, the '80s. We saw our share of Democrats as governors and uh, as presidents, but the Republicans really did dominate the big stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the trust within the government, especially after Watergate. So after Watergate happened, the Republican Party reconstituted itself with a more anti-government ideology. Democrats slowly began a transformation from white working class voters to more diverse, highly educated coastal elite voters. We also saw they required candidates to disclose their campaign funds. And another thing I found very interesting was the Pew Research Center. They actually did a study that in 1958, near the end of the presidency of Eisenhower, they found 73 percent of Americans, Democrats and Republicans, were trusted the government. And then after that, the end of Johnson's run, they, even though they were divided, with the Vietnam War, they still had pretty big trust in the government. Mm -hmm. However, after Watergate and Nixon's resignation, they saw that that went down to 36 percent of people trusted the government. And I think that also goes back to kind of now how we have more information and more access to information with the government. I feel like back in the day, they had so much more trust because they weren't given all the information. Now with media and journalism, we, so, we see so much more of what's happening behind the scenes, when back then we really didn't have any of that information. Nixon was also, a lot of people know, he was like the spark in testing our presidents and mm -hmm. really, you know, seeing what they're capable of, what powers they actually have. So that was big. Obviously, we've still never seen a president be impeached by both the House and the Senate. But yeah. his resignation definitely showed something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he didn't want to resign. No. He, oh, he said, no. oh, he he said so in an interview he, yeah. he, didn't, he wanted to complete his term. Of course. I mean, he was a really passionate president of the United mm -hmm. States. And the fact that he resigned because of this just shows how big of a deal it was. And I think that's why the trust in government was so hurt, because everyone trusted Nixon, because he was so passionate about, yeah. about American politics. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There was no way for him to continue this mm -hmm. term. 
he had broke so much trust with the government, like you said, like this was such an important part of our history and what presidency is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what I took away, which I thought was the most interesting, was Ford's takeover as president. He was the first ever president to not have any sort of election into his position. Right. Don't forget right. he was appointed, the person before him had to resign due to another scandal, which makes the whole thing very interesting. But now let's get into the actual crime itself, and let's get into what actually happened. So does anybody want to take the helm of this one? So I could start off by saying, so basically they broke into Watergate, um, to try to get information, hotel. Yes, hotel. 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 Oh, yeah. hotel. To try Nothing to, get, to do with water no. or gates. No, no water. <laughs> to try to get more information on the Democratic Party that they were running the election against. Mm -hmm. um, they were tapping wires. They were stealing documents, and they were pretty high officials, ex CIA agents, ex like mm -hmm. government positions that you would hope to trust. And they were getting paid by um, Richard Nixon's campaign, basically, which was mm -hmm. found by Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, who were the investigative yep. reporters in this case, which in this case, which actually read, led to Richard Nixon's. Regulation. Yeah, and something I find very interesting about Woodward and Bernstein is how different they were. They said Woodward was a well-educated person, and he grew up in a Republican household. He even graduated from Yale University, whereas Bernstein was grew up in a communist Jewish family, and he was very rebellious, and he actually ended up dropping out of college. And Woodward was always the more investigator. He was the one who investigated Deep Throw and got all the investigations going, while Bernstein was more the writer. And that's what people say really made them a good team, is how different they were, and they really worked together well on this case. Yeah, you mentioned Deep Throat, and I just kind of want to explain who that is. Mm -hmm. So that was an alias name um, for a guy who was giving information to the investigative journalist, and they would not say his name for his own purposes mm -hmm. and whatever. And he was the one that kind of made the investigation look into the money that mm -hmm. was being given to the people who broke in, which was crucial right. in this case. And I yeah. found it interesting that he would have meetings with Woodward, and the way they kind of connected was they would move a flower pot on his apartment to like signal that they were gonna have a meeting. So no one really knew who yeah. this was. Boy, if I could be like the fly mm -hmm. on the wall right. during those conversations, I wish. Mm -hmm, I wanna right. know exactly what yeah. was said. Yeah. So we always talk about somebody who always, who always bared the worst brunt out of this whole thing. I think we know who I'm gonna mention bared the worst brunt. Any takers? No? Okay. Frank Wills, the security <laughs> guard. The poor oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor yeah. guy. I mean, he <laughs> did not get... Some yeah. people said he got a raise. In fact, he did not get a raise from this, yeah. and he spent most of his life in poverty. He played himself in movies. He didn't really get what he deserved money-wise no, out of the whole thing. It was very sad. And he actually himself got prosecuted for two crimes, one in 1979, another one in mm -hmm. the early 1980s. So he really got the unfortunate step in the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. I mean, you can't help but feel bad for him. Like, out of anything that happened throughout the whole Watergate scandal, he really, like, he didn't deserve what he got no. at the end of the day. He deserved so much better. Mm -hmm. So 69 individuals were charged, only 49 were convicted, and another thing that I thought was very interesting was what college professors thought about it. Mm -hmm. Some, like Thomas Johnson, said it would just be a fine, uh, excuse me, a minor footnote. Of course, that's not really the mm -hmm. case. It really did sink in. You know, the, what's interesting, too, is the opinion on Nixon. A lot of people still think of him as one of the better presidents. A lot of people mm -hmm. said he was very good with international relations. I personally think he did pretty well internationally, but obviously this really did taint his reputation. Well, that was part of his election campaign was his relations and his foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. He wrote on that a lot. That was something that he made very clear that was his priority. Right. Mm -hmm. And re-elect the president is a campaign. Usually when you re-elect the president, they usually do have a good chance of winning. However, mm -hmm. they do get cocky on the debate stage because oh, if anyone's yeah. ever heard of what Mitt Romney has said, he said the commander-in-chief, oh he knows what he's doing. He knows all of <laughs> exactly. the other leaders. He, he basically has a stronger position than Congress, although technically the Constitution says they're even. He's basically one of the most powerful people in the world, and he steps in and he goes, who is this imbecile running against me? Exactly. So that is something that Nixon yeah. obviously probably had in the back of his mind. The whole thing was really just a big disaster, and obviously I don't think we would ever see something like this today with all of the technology that we have. I agree. No, I think a president would never get away with something as big as this, because exactly. it was a large scheme that took a lot of time, a lot of meetings. There was tapes that were erased. I just mm -hmm. don't think that mm -hmm. a president could get away with this nowadays. It's just such a different environment now with, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, like the journalism and the articles and 
social media is so much more globally spread now than it was back in the day that everything is recorded, everything's found out, everyone talks, especially with money, like we saw in the case with bribery. Right. People pay each other out. Money is such a big thing right. in this world today. Another so. thing we've seen, oh, excuse oh. me, sorry. Yeah. Another thing we've seen, mm -hmm. America has become very divided on the media mm -hmm. front, too. We Extremely. saw that We saw that with the Clinton scandal as well, which I think we should talk about oh, in the future. Oh, I definitely yeah. Yeah. Should be We saw that with the yeah. Clinton scandal, was that there wasn't necessarily many crimes broken there, but the media yeah. was so divided and, you know, wanted their party mm -hmm. in power so badly, they'd move to any way possible to get the opposing party's president out of power. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, any last words? Well, I think it should be brought to light that the new president, a.k.a. his vice president, granted Nixon yeah. a full say, pardon. Like, he didn't him, yeah. have to repay yeah. anything back. He got away scot-free. We see yeah, this yeah. today. A lot of Republicans who are currently running for president right now, I mean, obviously, we're only down to three or four. Right. But the original number, they were all saying, we don't think it's a good idea for Trump to be prosecuted, not because he didn't commit the crimes, but because... Prosecuting a president, former or in the past or in mm -hmm. the future, it divides the country. Yeah, that's so that, right. was, yeah. that was something that Ford saw, and that I think really does affect politics still today. So what I think is most interesting about this case, now that we wrap up, is how much it's influenced politics I still agree. today. It really has changed yeah. the political landscape, and with technology and things like that, it really does affect what we see today. That's all the yeah. time we have for today. Over 150, excuse me, over 50 years later, not 150. And 19 presidents later, questions are still being asked when it comes to trust in our government and what Nixon's impeachment would have looked like. Back to you, Jake. Thanks, Ryan. Coming up next, we have a, few, we have a new game. Can you guess what's in the box? Stay tuned. Okay, I feel like we're doing pretty good yeah, so far with yeah, this segment. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No looking, no cheating. We're, we're not, not looking, we're not. We're not looking. Santa will not visit you if you, if you uh, cheat. Oh, right. man. Okay. Welcome back to Nittany Talk. It's time to learn what's in those boxes. Over to you, Jordan. Thanks, Jake. As kids do during the holiday season, presents get shaken as they try to guess what's inside the box. We're doing that today with a little bit of a twist. While not shaking the box, we only have our sense of touch to try to guess what holiday-themed item is inside. So you guys need to not look for a second because yeah. I'm about to load up the box for our first what's All in the box. Right. Close our eyes, no cheating. Close your or, eyes, no or, or, cheating. And, and turn around, actually. Okay. No cheating. Tell us what you can okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. Are we good? You guys can turn around. Okay. okay. Time to Honors? guess what's in the Almost box. At the same time? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, fine. Oh my gosh, this is a. Um, oh, is it a smaller object? It's a ceramic Christmas tree. One second. Get right? a feel. Let me verify. <laughs> you know what? I verify. Ceramic Christmas tree. That was so fast. Was. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, it is, it's, but technically it's a glass Christmas tree, but you right. guys got it. Same difference. Good job. Mm -hmm. All right. A tree is a tree. Okay. A of... I thought you guys were going to think it was a pine cone, but whatever. All right. <laughs> a pine cone for Christmas? Okay. Listen. I have some more ornaments, so. All right. I think it's, uh, it's your turn now. Oh, my, oh we're doing, okay, okay, okay. Right. okay. We're not okay, looking. Yeah, you guys are definitely going to get this one. Um, All right. I'm turning around, not looking. Okay, okay. Um, you want to switch places? Okay, yeah. yeah. Are we right. good to go? Yeah, whenever you guys are ready. Okay, right, good? ready? All right, let's do it. All right. All right. Feel. Can oh. I shake it? Of course, yeah. Oh, Whatever. wait a minute. Wait Rip a minute. it apart. Hold do on. whatever you need to do. Hold on. Well, like, it's, okay, so it's a candy cane it's filled a candy with something, cane. but the question is, what's the something? Okay, here's the thing. So I always got Skittles and M&M's. Don't so overthink it. It's got, it's got it's got to be, okay. No, but like, I want to get the candy right. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying don't overthink it. It is a candy cane. Don't overthink much. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Do you think there's like a logo on here? That oh, that's what, candy. That, yeah, but what does the shake sound like to you? We've established that, Jackson. We're looking for I know, it. I know. But I'm like, one step at a time, Danny. One, uh, what's the, oh, do you think there's a logo on the top that we can, no. You, you, want, you want to feel for it real quick? I, I don't feel anything. Okay. So it's basically like our explosions. intuition. What's yeah. our intuition telling us right now? We're going to say, okay, Skittles. Candy cane full of Skittles. Yeah. Skittles. Incorrect. M&M's? No. M&M's. But what colors? Oh. what colors? What colors? What colors are M&M's? Red and green. Yes, okay. Got that. That kind of counts. Don't, don't, don't eat red food dye. Red and green do not eat red food dye. That is horrible for you. Don't do any food dyes, especially not red 40 and yellow 5. But it's right. holiday. Oh, oh, wait. Why didn't we think of that? This is holiday-themed things. You know what? You're right. Okay. Hmm. Jackson. All right. You guys uh, turn around. I'm yeah. going to walk behind you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I feel like we're doing pretty good yeah, so far with yeah, this segment. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> no looking, no cheating. We're not. We're not. We're not looking. Santa will not visit you if you, if you uh, cheat. All oh right. man. Okay. All right, you were not good. Okay. All right. Hundred dollars. Okay. Let's. What? Okay, you got it. What? It's a challenging one. This is a dog toy. No, it's not. Dog. No, this is. 
No. It's, it's got like, little arms. It's got, okay, okay, okay. Right? Hold up. <laughs> this is a gingerbread so man plastic? of some sort. Is it actually? A plastic gingerbread man. Why are you so good at this? Why is he so good at this? Intuition. My entire holiday season has been ruined by Danny. It's not ruined. So is it right? I'll Can leave. I pull yes. it out? Bye. Why is there a Well, you say arms, and I'm like, oh, immediately. It lights, it, it lights up. It's a light up gingerbread man. How it's the greatest thing. You, the you said it had arms. Yeah. What holiday object has arms? I keep forgetting. This is a holiday themed episode. I mean, okay. It okay. Could, okay. It could have been a spirit, guys. You gotta get yeah, that for sure. Well, All right. Okay. There, no cheating. The, there we go. All right. All right. My All right. next item. Don't look. <coughs> All right. Let me just. Let me sneak here. here. This one I feel like is gonna be a little difficult. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. Okay. As hard as the last The viewers know why I think it's difficult. Okay. Just put it in there. Please be careful. Don't break it. Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, let's get a feel on this. Ice on it. All right, let me get a feel. <laughs> oh. Okay. 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 Hold on. All right, I need to get a rotation on There's this. There's something. <laughs> like the liquid goes in this. Okay, this is a mug, 100%. This is yeah, 100%. but mug. what? Some Don't Are look you at me like that. Is it frosty, the snowman? Are you kidding me? How? I really didn't think you guys were gonna get this because the the eyes that you can't feel it's, them. That's a big How mug. did you get that? Got a little nose on. Oh wait, the carrot yeah. nose. Yeah. Okay. All right, my item. We're very festive around here, Jordan. We know our stuff. Okay. This look, is look. doing Turn like around. I thought this was gonna be so much more okay, challenging. Turn around. Oh. <laughs> and take the tag off. Okay. Okay. These these won't be super hard. I don't think. All right, you guys got it. Okay. All right. Ready? All right, I will do the honors this time. See what yeah. we got. Okay. Ooh, this one's a little softer. It's got a tag on it still. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you, Target. Let me feel it. Let me feel it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, me, okay. I gotta help. Oh wait. Oh. Oh, I know what this is. is oh, wait, why am I turned around? Some, it's some, some, I'm actually <laughs> brain fart. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Some, okay. It's some, a glove. It's, it's gotta gloves. be some type of clothing. Yes. It's either hat or glove. Yeah. Like, glove. Is, is there anything else to it? It's just gloves. It's just gloves. Oh. Gloves with the tag. Okay, that was the. Guess the price of the gloves. Do the prices right real quick. Well, if it's if it's wild okay, okay, fable, okay. I'm gonna go like this is like a. I'm gonna say it's oh, like. Look, it's got the little finger things. This is so nine dollars and fifty cents. Incorrect. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's five dollars. Okay. What? That's a good deal. Cheap anyway. Gloves. I just right. embarrassed myself on air. That's right. amazing. You too. Um, Not looking. Please, please turn around. Right. Please. Over I beg here. of you. Well, this is our last item. For the love of Christmas. So uh, we're doing a lot better than I was anticipating. Yeah. Okay. And you guys are good. Why am I doing that? Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. Um, Christmas lights. No, do not. Keep, feel it out, feel it out. Are they twinkle lights? Yes. Are we going? Yes, but guess what colors? Red and, Red green. and green. And what else? And white. Oh, no. is it like rainbow? Is it rainbow? It's rainbow. Rainbow. Give me that. Woo! I'm slightly concerned with how well we did at this. What can I, really, I say? Trust your gut. I really you know thought what, though? that it's was. Actually, it's actually oh, a good yeah, thing, okay, though. Oh, yeah, okay, rainbow. But you know what? These are all fun holiday Items. It, that mean, was, it means that we're festive. It it mean, this is a good thing. Thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> it for means this. that we're in the festive. spirit. For this I'm honestly spirit. very proud 100%. of us. <laughs> that was definitely a lot easier than I thought, but <laughs> it was still fun. Can't complain. It's such a fun way to get into the holiday spirit. Back to you, Jake. Well, that's all for this week's episode. We talked politics, music, Watergate, and finally figured out what's in those boxes. For Nittany Talk, I'm Jake Santora, and we hope to see you next week for the last episode of 2023.